All right, turn in your Bibles, please, to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> and we will read our foundation scripture that we began with in our last session together. Ephesians chapter 6. If you have it, say, I have it. All right. Notice verse 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The first part of the verse is what I want to zero in on. It says, praying always with all prayer with all prayer say that with all prayer now that very statement implies that there are different kinds of prayer because otherwise all the writer would have had to say would be pray always and you would have known that he wants us to pray always but when it says all prayer that implies that there are different kinds or methods of prayer. And I submit to you, as I pointed out last time, as we close our lesson, that I have in my personal studies, I have found six different methods of prayer. And by the way, our subject is answered prayer, guaranteed. Answered prayer, guaranteed. If you pray, you should get answers. And if you don't get answers, then you didn't pray correctly. Because the very verse that we just read, it says praying always with all prayer. Well, why would the Spirit of God tell us to pray if we weren't going to get an answer to the praying? Otherwise, there'd be no need to pray. So, you ought to get answers. However, because there are different kinds of prayer for different purposes and that are governed by different rules all in the natural all games have rules that govern the play of the game using that analogy prayer also has rules because the fact that there are different kinds of prayer for different purposes then there are different rules that govern each type of prayer. But if you don't know that, and you attempt to pray the different kinds of prayer with the same rules, it would be the same effect as playing baseball with basketball rules. It won't work, and you wouldn't get the results you want. You'd be called out on the technicality. So we started talking about the six different kinds of prayers last time. Prayer number one that we talked about was a prayer of what? Agreement. And the rule in the prayer of agreement is found, we don't have to turn to it, but it's found in Matthew 18, 19, 18 chapter, 19 verse, where it says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. I want to emphasize the plurality. If two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they, the two, shall agree on, it shall be done for them, the they, and the two. So that prayer, in order for it to work, the two people or more have to be in agreement. I can't be believing for north and you believe for south and it worked. The prayer would be short-circuited or canceled out. So that kind of prayer is the prayer of agreement. Then we talked about what? Prayer. prayer of faith. Now, I'm going to deal with that one in more detail because the prayer of faith is the primary prayer that the average Christian will pray most of the time. It's also called petition prayer. The prayer of petition or the prayer of faith is me and the Heavenly Father. You're not involved in this. I'm not involved in yours. This is not two of you agree. This is me and the Father. Not my wife and I and the Father. This is me and the Father. And the rule for that prayer is found in Mark 11, 24. You don't have to turn to it. I'm going to deal with it in more detail a little later because it's such an important aspect and it's the primary prayer that most Christians will be led to pray. 
And that prayer says, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Notice the difference in the prayer of agreement. If two of you shall agree on earth is touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. This one says, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it, not they shall. Difference in prayer, okay? We then we looked at the prayer number three, which was what? Prayer of consecration and dedication. That's the prayer that Jesus prayed in the garden where he used it, where he used an if it be thy will. The prayer of consecration and dedication is a prayer where you're consecrating or dedicating yourself to do the will of God, but you don't know what the will of God is. In other words, the will of God is not specifically covered under the covenant. Anything that's in the covenant if you put in, if it be thy will at the end of the prayer, you have just deleted the prayer. It won't work because when you say if, you're saying you don't know, so you're praying in doubt and not in faith, and so it won't work. But most Christians think you're supposed to put a, if it be thy will on the end of every prayer, thinking it's a mark or sign of humility, not realizing it's a sign of stupidity. Biblical stupidity. In other words, not being knowledgeable about what you're doing. Thinking you're being sincere. But in the prayer of consecration and dedication, you would use an if it be thy will. Jesus only prayed it one time. And as I explained last time, and I, want to, I don't want to go into the detail, but he was committing and dedicating himself to become the sin bearer for mankind. As I said, he had always had unbroken fellowship with the Father from eternity past. He'd never been separated from the Father. There'd never been a glitch in their relationship. But in order to become sin for man, he was gonna have to be cut off from God. He didn't in the natural want to experience that, being cut off from God. Yet he did want to obey God and fulfill the call that God had placed upon his life to bear the sin of mankind to set man free. But God didn't tell Jesus everything because there's another statement that Jesus made one time when he talked about him coming back. He said, I don't know when I'm coming. The angel don't know. Only the father knows the day that I'll be coming back. Well, it was the same thing with the plan of redemption. Jesus was saying in essence to God, if there's any other way to redeem mankind without me having to be separated from you and our fellowship broken, then let that be the way. However, not my will, but your will be done. Right. See what I mean? That's the prayer of consecration and dedication. I gave you an example of that uh, in reference to my own ministry. When the Lord began to deal with me about leaving the denomination that I was in to start Crenshaw Christian Center, he, said, he just gave me an unction in my spirit that I was to leave that denomination and start another church, one that would be dependent upon him and independent of man. But... Los Angeles and its environs, it's a large geographical area. You've got all kind of incorporated cities. You've got Palos Verdes, you've got Torrent, you've got Gardena, you've got Compton, you've got Santa Monica, you've got Beverly Hills, you've got Pasadena, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I didn't know where to go, and I couldn't go in the Bible and find, ah, oh, Fred Price, go to 9550 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Inglewood, California, and start Crenshaw Christian Center. Well, if, if that was in there, I could follow that. But that's not in the covenant. That's not, it, it doesn't tell me where to go. So when I prayed, I had to pray the prayer of consecration and dedication. I had to say, Father, I am willing, if it's your will, that I go to L.A., Inglewood, Long Beach, Pasadena, whatever, not my will, but your will be done, I'm willing to go. Do you follow me? So in that sense, I say, if it be your will that I go to Inglewood, I'm willing to go. If it be your will that I go to Long Beach, I'm willing to go. Because that's not in the covenant. You understand? But now, if I'm praying for healing, and I say, if it be your will, you've just signed the death certificate. That's right. Because you're saying you don't know what his will is, and he very plainly told you that with Jesus' tribe, you were healed. And if you were, then you are. And if you are, then you is. Okay. Now... We left off with this one last time, Luke chapter 22, the prayer of praise, or rather uh, Luke chapter 2, I should say, the prayer of praise and worship. I ran out of time at that point. Luke chapter 2, if you will. So there are different kinds of prayer. You've got to know the rules. Now, see, it seemed like it's complicated, but it's really not. And if churches had been doing what they should have been doing in the first place, then they would have taught the people and the people would know 
and it wouldn't be like a mystery or and it wouldn't seem like ooh, we're gonna do all of this well, so much why is it it's no more than anything else you learn how to do you know it, it, at first it takes a little time to get accustomed to doing things a certain way after a while you don't even think about it you just do it you know I mean you just do it but you have to first of all learn of course obviously but once you learn then it's not a problem it's the same thing with it because you do want you should want results now I don't, I don't know about anybody else I don't pray because I don't have anything else to do <laughs> I got too much to do and not enough time to get it all done so when I pray personally I pray for results only because that's what my father told me to do he told me to pray so if he told me to pray, then he must want me to get the results of my praying. So, but if I don't know the rules, I won't get any results. And as I said last time, I prayed when I first got saved, I went to a church, they didn't tell me anything. In fact, I went to four different denominations over a 17 year period. They, they, all they told me, hold on to God's unchanging hand. You know what I mean? And I would have done that if I could have found a hand, but I never could find his hand. And I didn't know where it was. And so it was just like, you know, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. I never got any answers, never got any results. So I didn't even pray anymore. I stopped praying. What good was it? I wasn't getting results. Well, I didn't know that I didn't know how to do it correctly because my church didn't tell me. So I was a victim. And most Christians end up being victims, go through their whole life, be a Christian for 45 years, never get any prayers answered. Amen. Amen. Only because they don't know the rules of the game. And it's real simple, like everything else, once you know the rules of the game. I, I know some of you all uh, was watching TV just recently when there was a couple of uh, NBA, I think it was the NBA, <laughs> uh, basketball teams were playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the teams won some kind of championship. Is that right? Any, do, we have any, do we have any basketball aficionados here? You, you, in fact, you know, about basketball? You, you know anything about the rules of basketball? You know about the rules of basketball? I know some rules. Sure. You, anybody here know the rules? I know my son does. You know the rules, Freddie? Basketball? <laughs> Ain't no big thing. But when you first started playing, you didn't know the rules. You had to learn the rules, right? And after that, it becomes second nature. But you can't play basketball with baseball rules. And you can't pray the prayer of faith with the rules that govern the prayer of consecration and dedication. All right, Luke chapter 2. Do you have it? Say, I have it. All right. We want, we want answered prayer, guaranteed. Amen, right? At least I do. Fred does. Say, Fred Price wants answered prayer. He's the only one that wants answered prayer. Uh -oh, okay. All right, Doug. Don't get hostile now. Luke, Luke chapter 2. This is the prayer of praise and worship. Luke chapter 2, verse 20. This is after the shepherds had been given information by the angelic entourage that came from heaven about announcing the birth of Christ. Verse 20. Then the shepherds returned after they had gone to see the babe in the manger. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Now there is a prayer of praise and worship. You're not asking God for anything. You're not asking him to do anything for you when you're praising the Lord then it's a type of prayer. It's you extolling and praising the Father. In that prayer, you're not asking for anything. You're not asking God to do anything for you. You're just praising Him and glorifying His name. Okay? All right. Now, a prayer of intercession. Romans chapter 8. Prayer number 5, Romans chapter 8. Now, last time when we first started off with this, I started off with this verse, but I didn't want to do it today because I knew I was going to go into a little bit more detail on it. But this is uh, another type of prayer, and all Christians should be involved in this sometime. Sometimes. All right, Romans chapter 8, if you have it, say I have it. All right, verse 26. It says, likewise the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, also helps in our weaknesses, or as the tradition says, infirmities, for we do not know what we should pray for, for we do not know what we should pray for, but we do not know what, say what, what, what we should pray for, but we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, Holy Spirit himself, makes intercession for us 
with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, notice carefully what that verse does not say because this is another area where churches, theology, denominational denominations, and ministers have made an error, probably not intentionally, but sometimes when we read things, we will interpose into what we read what we're thinking in our minds. And actually what's on the page will not really be what we see. We will see on the page what's in our mind. And we can miss it. Not intentionally, but sometimes if you're not careful and you're not really disciplined to examine every word, you can miss it and misapply it. Here's what I mean. Notice what this verse does not say. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. It does not say we don't know how to pray. And that's what many have taken from that verse. And they say, well, you know, the Bible tells us that we don't know, we don't know how to pray. So we have to say, if it be thy will, if it be your will. But see, this verse doesn't say that. This verse does not say you don't know how. It does, it's not dealing with how. It's dealing with what. How is one thing. What is something else? All right, I want, to, I want that to sink in because it's so vital. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. I'm adding the word to. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, this statement, what to pray for as we ought, is talking about one specific thing, and that is intercession. Intercession is when I am praying for someone else, for them, for their benefit. I'm not even in it. I'm just the conduit, the pipeline, the wire that carries the current, the electricity. It's about the light bulb. It's about someone else. And in true, say true, true. say in the truest in the truest, highest, highest form, form of intercession. Of intercession. You, may not, you may not, I may not, I may not, we may not, we may not know, what know what to pray for, to pray for as we ought. As we ought. That, that, that's only in intercession. And only in the highest form of intercession. Because don't tell me I don't know what to pray for. I used it last week, but it's, it, it'll go with the territory. I know what to pray for. If I'm hungry and starving and don't have no food, don't tell me I don't know what to pray for. Yeah, pray for some food. Send the ravens, send the beavers or somebody here with some food. I'm starving, man. Don't tell me I don't know what to pray for. Man, if the marshal's tacking up a foreclosure notice on my house, don't tell me I don't know what to pray for. I need some money, honey. I need some money to forestall this, 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 them taking over my property. I know what to pray for. If I don't have a job, I'm unemployed. My family is languishing because I don't have a job. Don't tell me I don't know what to pray for. I'm praying for a job. Yeah, Are you following me? Yeah. Now, but this, this one is talking about intercession. Now, there are two kinds of intercession. There is what I call general intercession, which all of us ought to be, all Christians ought to be praying when we pray for one another. Just like I, I generally pray for you all, though it doesn't seem like it does a lot of good for some of you. <laughs> But I'm not calling any name. I'm, I said for some, I, you know, amen. But I pray for you as your pastor. I pray general prayer for you. That's, I'm interceding on your behalf. I'm not praying for me at that time. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for the wisdom of God to be made available to you. That, in other words, all the good stuff, only good stuff I pray for you. That's, that's general. And all of us ought to be praying for one another that way. We ought to be praying for, the Bible tells us, pray for those that are in authority, in power. So that we can live a quiet and peaceable life. You know what I'm saying? So we should pray for our leaders. Because God can work through the leaders on our behalf with our intercession. Amen. Even though they might be ungodly people. Amen. But God is the one that originated authority in the first place. 
not necessarily the individual person who is presently in that office, but the fact that there be an office, the fact that there be government, so that we can live in safety, in peace. So we should pray for our leaders. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with their political point of view, but pray for them because they're the ones signing the papers that are going to affect our lives. Do you follow what I'm saying? That's, that's general intercession. Now, we get into biblical specific intercession in terms of what this verse is talking about. Things on earth, now you have to listen to this carefully because for some of you this will be just far out. I mean, this will just be, this will be MTV. <laughs> With a capital M. I mean, it'll be far out. But in order for God Almighty to work in this earth realm, he has to be given permission. I, 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 I just want to go slow. I want that to sink in because I know for some, we have visitors here. They say, oh my God, I heard about this church. I knew it was a cult, but I ain't never heard nothing like that before. Well, the assumption that you're making then is that you know everything and nobody else knows anything, which is a bad assumption. But listen again, and then I'm going to prove it from the Bible. How about that? If I prove it from the Bible, then I'm not such a crackpot after all. I said things in the earth realm have to be prayed for Amen. in order for God to be able to get involved in the things in the earth realm. Now see, that sounds fanciful, but now keep your finger here on this uh, eighth chapter of Romans and go to Luke chapter four. Because intercession, intercessory prayer is very, very critical to God's fulfillment of his plans and purposes for the age. And a lot of things don't get done because the church's too lazy to pray. Yes. Say that. Or we're so interested just in me, myself, and I. Yes. Hallelujah. My new SUV, my new plasma TV, <laughs> and the rest of the world talk to the hand. The attitude is, is like that. And so things can't get done. And so the church has a tremendous responsibility. Now, now, everybody heard of Adam and Eve, I'm sure. Even if you're not a Christian, you heard of Adam and Eve. All right. They were from a biblical perspective. You can't say it's not true because you weren't there. So you don't know what's true. You're going to believe something. You got some opinion about something. But not having been there, then my guess is as good as your guess is as good as his guess is as good as their guess. Right? Bottom line. You weren't an eyeball witness. So what? You won't believe something. Well, we had a Bible. The Bible gives us God's perspective on it. Okay? So I can't deny it because I wasn't there. So I might as well go with the flow until the flow fails. Did you get that? I might as well go with the flow until the flow fails because I don't have anything better. All right, Adam and Eve were placed in the garden, given a prohibition about not doing a certain thing. Why? Only because they were created as free moral agents with the ability to choose. And choice is responsibility. And responsibility for your choices is going to bring a consequence, either positive or negative. For every choice you make in life, there's a consequence, a corresponding con a consequence. Could be a good one, could be a bad one. Every choice has a consequence. Yes. Even if you don't do anything, you are making a choice. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Did you get that? Right. Even if you do nothing, that is a choice. Right. And there's a consequence involved with it. So Adam and Eve were given a choice and given a prohibition. They failed. Now, when Adam was created, he was really created as the God of this world. This whole planet was his. He be the man. He was the HNIC. <laughs> now, for those of you that don't know what that means, 
don't sweat it. Some of the, some of, some of the folk know what I'm talking about. In other words, he was in charge. He was a man. He was a man. He had, he, he named all the animals. He was something. Now, when he listened to the temptation of the enemy, Satan threw the serpent. He, in essence, title deeded the entire planet and everything on it and in it into the hands of the tempter, Satan. And Satan became the god of this world system. Okay? Now, watch this. You'll be able to see this. Luke chapter 4, do you have it? Say, have it. All right. <laughs> Y'all get that foe? Yeah, Chap chapter foe. That be the one after three, and one just before five. Okay, chapter four for you more sophisticated and erudite and scholarly people. Luke chapter four. This is what's called the wilderness temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, watch this. Um. Verse 5, said, then the devil, taking him, the context indicates this is Jesus. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now, if you think that that's impossible, how could he do that? Easy, we do it all the time nowadays. You can go to certain places where they have satellite control. They'll have 500 television monitors showing a picture of everything going on on the planet at the same, at the same time. All you got to do is just scan the monitors. Got satellites beaming pictures. They have, the, they have the whole planet footprinted in such a way that the beam from the satellite come down to the earth. They call it a footprint. And they, they overlap so that there's no empty spaces. And they have cameras in those satellites that can take a picture of a pinhead from 23,000, 22,500 miles up in the sky. And you, they can, you can see on the monitors in these control centers, they have hundreds of monitors. They got every, everything going on at the same time, you can see it. So if man can do that, surely spirit creatures are more powerful and knowledgeable than men. So when, when, when Satan said, I showed him all the kings of the world in a moment of time, that's not fanciful. Not nowadays. 100 years ago, inconceivable. Today, ain't no big thing. No big thing. Okay, now, now, now watch this now. Verse 5, then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now watch this. And the devil said to him, all this authority, the tradition says power, but it means authority. And the devil said to him, all this, how much? All. How much is left out of all? None. The word all is an inclusive term, isn't it? Watch this now. He said, all this authority or power, I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me. He didn't say I snatched it. He didn't say I put a gun in Adam's mouth and said, give it up. He said it was delivered to me. Watch this now. And I give it, I, the devil is talking, I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, verse 7, if you will worship me, all will be yours. That was the temptation. Now, think about it. Just think about it. What is a temptation and the purpose of a temptation? Why, why would anybody, the devil included, why would anybody attempt to tempt somebody? What would be the purpose of the temptation? To get you to yield to it, absolutely. If you're going to tempt somebody, you're tempting them because you want them to fall for the temptation, right? Well, in order for it to be a temptation, the person doing the tempting has to be able to deliver on the temptation and you have to be able to subscribe to it or accept it 
or it's a farce, right? Right. Okay. Now, watch this. Verse 8, and Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, you lying devil. You know you can't give this because it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Almighty God, and you're just telling a lie. Oh, it doesn't say that, does it? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, my God. What? It, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it doesn't. Here's my point. Did you notice that Jesus did not deny the devil's ability to give it to him. And if he could not deliver on it, it would not have been a temptation. You'd have to be able to yield to it in order for it to be a temptation. I have, I have use for about $27 trillion. No, not for me personally, but I could, do, I could do a lot of good. There's a lot of things I'd like to be able to do. If I had $27 trillion, I could do that. If somebody came to me and really could offer it to me, had that kind of money and proved it, bank statement, the whole thing, and said, I will give you the $27 million if you will be the first man to get pregnant and have a baby. That's all you got to do. Just get pregnant and have a baby. Well, as much as I would like the $27 trillion, only because I have something I could use it for, for good, ain't no temptation to me. I couldn't yield to it if I wanted to. So, so here's my point. When the devil said, it's been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I will. If you fall down and worship me, it'll all be yours. That, he had to be able to deliver on that. Now remember what he said? He said, it has been delivered to me. It was delivered to him in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. When Adam sinned, he in essence, when I said he title deeded it over to Satan, he in essence delivered it to Satan. And Satan became the legal owner of the planet and everything in it. That's why all the resources are not in the hands of the children of God. Don't you think God would be some kind of dumbbell? If he was God and created all the gold and silver and all these wonderful things that are what we call expensive and then let the devil's kids have them and his own children don't get them, don't you think there's something wrong with that picture? Huh? I know if I had those kind of resources, my kids would be the first one to get it. My wife first and of course then the kids following. <laughs> Amen. I wouldn't give it to, I wouldn't give it to you. Much as I love y'all. Mama first. Mama bear first and the little bears after that. <laughs> huh? And then them. Big pardon? And then them. And then them. Yeah, y'all that come in. You get an honorable mention. You get honorable mention. Hallelujah. Yeah, y'all get honorable mention. Okay, watch it now. Watch it now. And so, and so since Satan is the, the legal owner of the earth, realm the earth system that's why it's so screwed up why so you don't i hope you don't think god's running the world because if god is running the world he lost it many 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 millennial ago millennium ago he lost it because this thing's out of control it's a mess it's a cesspool it could explode any moment so if god is running the world he lost control a long time ago no no god is running the church <gasps> when the church lets him run it. I don't qualify that. But the devil, Satan, is running the world system. That's why it's so unequal. That's why he had a has and a have not. That's why it's so messed up. But God has to let it run that way as long as we let it run that way. Why? Because it was delivered to Satan. Now, getting back to why do we need to intercede? Because God can't come in. You can, I, I'll give you a good illustration. You cannot come on my property and enter my house without my permission. You have no right. That's my property. I have a title deed. And unless I invite you in, I have a 44 Magnum that says you will not enter these premises. <coughs> Amen. And if you try to force your way in, I can shoot you. Because you're a trespasser. It's my property. I'm, I'm making a point now. Follow this now. I'm making a point. So God can't come in to the earth's realm and just do what he wants to do. He would be trespassing on Satan's property. 
But if I throw a party and I invite you over to my house, then nobody says you can't come because it's my property, my house, my party, and I can invite whoever I want to. God, we can invite God in through intercessory prayer to get involved in our circumstances. Now, let me give you scripture. Sounds great. Sound that sound good. Didn't that sound good? That sounded good. Did that? Well, that, 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 that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, that sounded good. I know it did. That sounded cool. Sounded good to me. Uh, but now we can't, that, that, that ain't true just because I said it and because it sounds reasonable. Let's, let's find scripture. Go to the the ninth chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. And this is where true intercession comes. Comes in. And it's a type of prayer. <clears throat> now, does anybody know Matthew chapter 9? Does anybody know? Has anybody ever heard or read the verse or probably memorized the verse? John 3.16? Yes. Anybody know that? Yes. On three, everybody say it. One, two, three. Okay, notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, for the world so loved God. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Why did he gave? Because he loved, right? He gave his only begotten son for what purpose? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life so 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 it must not be God's will that anybody perish right. because that's why he gave his son so that those people who saw or heard about his son could believe and not perish but have everlasting life so all of that together says it must be God's game that he wants people saved and not people's gain. That's right. Amen. Right? right? Is that right? Right. All right. Well, it, well, well. If God wants people saved, uh, why didn't He save them? Why didn't He just save them? He's the one that loved. Why? Why bring me into the into the mix? If He wants to save the world, why didn't He save the world? Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Matthew chapter 9, if you have it, say, I have it. Okay, now watch this. Uh, verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Why? Because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray. Say what? Pray. Say what? Pray. pray. Say what? Pray. I can't hear you. Pray. Say what? Pray. Okay, what? Who's talking? Jesus. Jesus. Not mankind. Who? Jesus. Jesus. He said, therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send down laborers into his harvest. Yes, yes. <laughs> Not our harvest. Not the devil's harvest, not mankind's harvest. His and his refers to the Father who refers to God so we could say God's harvest. Well, if God so loved the world and he wanted the world saved, then why do I have to pray that he'll send down laborers to the harvest? Look like he'd send them out himself. He can't because the harvest field is in the earth realm, which is the, the territory that's dominated by Satan, and God can't just come in unless he's invited over for the party. Now, if you don't understand that analogy, I won't even grace the next few minutes by saying what I think you probably are. <laughs> okay, back to Romans now. Back to Romans. So that's why we have to intercede because God can't just do what he wants to do. You know, you've heard people say, well, the Lord can do anything. Well, you know, in one sense, you're absolutely correct. 
by virtue of power, if he is God, look like he could do whatever he wants to do. But God is not a man. So his word is good. He, he doesn't say he's going to be somewhere at a certain time and then not show up. Amen. <laughs> I just said. And so, and so, he, he, his word is good. And whatever he says, he will do. So we have the privilege of working together with him. Now watch this. It says, likewise the Spirit helps in our weaknesses or infirmities, for we do not know what we should pray for as we are. Now, things, like I said, they have to be prayed for. So there's got to be someone to pray, as it were, to open the door for God to have a legal right to enter into the earth realm and work without Satan accusing him of trespassing and having him arrested on sight. Amen. Now that might be strange to you because you never heard that. And you won't hear that in the average church. You won't, you won't hear that in the average church. You, I, why? I don't know, but you won't, you won't. I was in it for 17 years and I never heard it. I was in four different denominations for 17 years and I never heard nothing about this. I just thought everything that happened was the will of God. Well, <laughs> must be God's will. No, 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 no. There's, there's a plan, a purpose, and things have to be prayed for. God needs people available to be intercessors. Amen. Now, watch this. Likewise, verse 26, likewise the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses or infirmities, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought in terms of intercession. Because sometimes when you're praying for someone, you might not even know who you're praying for. In fact, to have the best kind of intercession is best for you not to know who you're praying for. Now you might say, well, that don't make no sense. Yes, it does. Because if you knew who you were praying for and you didn't like the way they were wearing their hair this week, your prayer would be colored by your dislike for their hair. <laughs> Sounds funny? You know I'm telling the truth. You, when you see somebody, you size them up right away. Mm, man, look at that. Ain't that some, mm hmm I wonder where she got them boobs. Mm -hmm. some, some other jealous woman that ain't got none. I wonder where she got. Mm. Come on, don't play me. We'd mess it up because we'd put our own prejudices in it, our own likes and dislikes, or things we think we see when we don't see but we think we do and we're so convinced of it and we would end up coloring the prayer so God allows us to pray where we don't necessarily know we just need an issue prayed for Amen. so God can work Amen. so he brings us intercession now here is an area that most churches don't deal with watch this now verse 26 likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses or infirmities for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now that statement, groanings which cannot be uttered, doesn't even make sense. Just the statement, groanings which cannot be uttered. How can you have a groan and not utter it? That's how you know it was a groan, because somebody, oh, oh, you heard him, you heard him, didn't you? How, you? how do you groan and not say something? Or make some noise or something? Well, what this literally is saying, and it, it wasn't complete, the, the statement's not complete as it should be. It should be inter making a session with groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. Which means you run out of what to say, but you quit when you're out of time. <laughs> Stay right where you are. Don't move. If this message has been a blessing to you, the announcer will tell you some very important information about how you may obtain an audio cassette or CD and or DVD of this message which you've just heard for your own spiritual enrichment and edification. Remember again that these telecasts and radio broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers, and listeners. Remember also these words from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight.